Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Liturgy at Well of Hope. Um, everything you need for worship today will be in your bulletin or on the screen. Um, we have Brendan here with us. Thank you for being here, Brendan. Uh, while Camila is out on tour, um, and so we're happy, very happy to have Brendan here with us. Brendan will be here this week. Um, he'll be taking a break next week, and then he'll be back again the following week. Um, so Brendan is good to have you here worshiping with us. Um, we'll begin worship today with our Well of Hope welcome statement, found in your bulletin and on the screen. Welcome to Well of Hope. We proclaim God's love for all. We create community through worship, study, and play. We serve in love. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, Well of Hope will be a light of hope inclusion in Castle Rock and beyond. We have some announcements to talk about here right at the beginning. Um, if you haven't noticed, the last two weeks it's been a little bit warmer in here than usual. That's because the air conditioner is broken here. Um, I have been reassured that it is being fixed, that they are ordering parts to fix it. It's not a forever issue, it's a right now issue. Um, we are hoping, so just, I'm sorry, <laughs> is what I'm saying. It's just going to be a little warmer in here than it should be. Um, Bible study is back, it was back on last week, but it'll be like in the bulletin and like officially back on now in July. Uh, we meet at 1215 uh, at Christ Episcopal Church. Uh, love to have you there. It's a great time to study. We go over, essentially we go over the liturgy for that week, uh, lectionary, sorry, the lectionary for that week, the other L word. Um, and so... You get a chance to, like, explore scripture together. We, you know, I don't know the answers in this. Uh, and I just, like, show up and, like, wonder what we all think about this thing together. And so it's really fun space to wrestle with scripture um, and have that community space together. Um, we are hoping to start our summer, summer table talks, um, which summer table talks, If there's a history called table talks in the Lutheran Church where during the Reformation— uh, Katie Von Bora, Martin Luther's spouse, uh, has these table talks at their home where the theologians and reformants of the day gather around and they like they do the real work of the Reformation. We are going to do that. Um, it's very exciting. Uh, We're going to have these summer, think about them as small groups, um, three of them. So it's not a dedicating your whole rest of your future to them. There's three, guys. All right. You, know, you only have to go to three. Um, our sign-up hasn't been working, so council members are going to be calling you <laughs> and finding times that work for you. If you signed up already, they're still going to call you and, and put you, try and find the right space for you um, that works for your schedule. Think about it, because it is. This is exactly what it is. It's just friends getting together for, like, a drink or appetizers or a meal, and, and we have a discussion. That's it. It's fun. It's going to be exciting. Come get your ball, Raymond. It's fine. <laughs> it's great. Um, it's fun. It's exciting. It's a good. It's going to be a time where we can gather and talk about what's going on in our church. We're going to talk about uh, generosity. We're going to talk about a relationship. We're going to talk about what they mean in our life together as a church. And I, I hope you can make time to be there. Um, things we're not going to do. We're not going to ask you for more money. <laughs> if you're worried about that, don't be. That's not what's happening here. We are just having a conversation about generosity because ge living a generous life is an important thing in our world. It is important. We believe that when we experience generosity uh, from God, we can be more generous with the world. We experience other people's generosity with us more. Generosity is important, and we're going to talk about it. That's table talks. Uh, we are going to have a reception and a going away to college reception, I guess, uh, for Braden um, on July 28th. Um, so put that on your calendar. Make sure it's a, a time that you can be here. After that, we are going to have a confirmation class discussion. 
Get excited. We are doing confirmation at Well of Hope. I sat down with Lindsay last week, and man, this, is, this curriculum is going to be just a awesome. I've never seen a curriculum like it. We are going to do things differently. It's going to be fun. You should come. We are also, parallel to that, because I believe in intergenerational church, we are going to do an adult confirmation class. If you've been confirmed before and you want a refresher, you should come. It's going to be great. They're going to go side by side together, and once a month, we're going to get together with the kids and the adults, and we're going to talk about what we're learning together. It's going to be so cool. I am very excited about it, and I hope you can be there, okay? Most of the work is online. You show up and discuss things on Sunday afternoon. That's it. Does that make sense? If you're interested, you should come talk to me, and I'll put you on a list, and I will reach out to you when it starts. Or you can just show up on July 28th and make sure you know the now. There will be al- an email going out to the people that are interested, too. Um, there's a weekly email that goes out every Thursday. We are also on social media, on Instagram and Facebook. Um, if you want to sign up for our weekly email, it's on our website. Um, giving is an act of worship here at Well of Hope. We believe that giving and generosity is a spiritual discipline, and it helps us know God's love better. I encourage you to give when you can. Um, lastly, and most importantly, we at Well of Hope celebrate an open table, which means that anybody without exception is invited to take the bread and the wine, which is for us, the body and blood of Christ. It doesn't matter where you are in your walk with God. You are welcome, invited, and what's a good word for Encouraged, thank you. <laughs> encouraged to participate in communion with us. Um, I invite you into uh, a space of worship together as we join for our gathering hymn, Uh, found on page 32 or on the screen. Here in this place a new light is streaming Now is the darkness vanished away Here in this space our fears and our dreaming brought here to you the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our I invite you to join us for the order of confession and forgiveness. Please stand as you are able. God of the ancient and holy flame, you pour out your spirit upon all flesh. We try and fence her in. You speak through many languages. We shut our ears. 
You make one body from all our various gifts. We refuse to be connected. Pour out your spirit on us. Teach us a new creation. God, the spirit that moves and swells all around us, draws us near, removes our burdens, and refines our imperfections so that we might have new life. Children of God, your sins are forgiven. You are made whole with all creation. Abide together in the love of Christ so that the world might hear his song and take up the dance of jubilee. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of inclusive love, who knows us each by name, we thank you for the woman who stood out of the crowd and, defi and defied her uncleanness. To connect with you, we praise you for the leader of the synagogue who faced the mockery of others to give his daughter hope. May the flowing power of Christ bring healing and acceptance to the rejected and abused. Through Jesus Christ, giver of life. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter, I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. 
I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite the children to come forward for a children's message. I have props, which means it's an exciting children's service. Excuse me. Oh, I got him. Thank you. Okay, so today we have this really wild and unusual story in the gospel where Jesus gets off a boat and he's immediately greeted in a crowd by people, and Jesus is on his way someplace in a big old hurry. And um, he's walking through the crowd. And a woman grabs on who's sick, grabs on to his robe, the edge of his robe, and she's healed. And the text says, he felt power leave him. Okay? He, it just flowed out of him. Healing flowed right out of Jesus. And, and he kept walking. So he stops, he has this conversation with this woman, and she says, it was me, I touched your robe. And Jesus says, because of your faith, because you believe that you would be healed by touching my robe, you will be made well. Go and be healed. And then he goes on to his way. What would you guys think of that story? (laughs) Have you ever heard of somebody being healed by touching the edge of somebody's robe? Or somebody's clothes, like if, if I touched your jersey here on the edge of it, do you think I'd be healed? <laughs> no? Yeah. Well, it's worth a shot. Um, so in this story, Jesus' love is flowing out of him. It's, it's he, the, the bounds between himself and his love for the whole world is, is open. There's an open exchange, and things just flow out of him. And it made me think of these tea bags here. You know how you put tea in water? put tea in water. It's black tea, so you can see it. I don't know why it's not flowing out of here right now. These aren't very good tea bags. <laughs> but you, but you, you have, you've seen tea that kind of like, you see it changing color? You see it changing color? No, well, it's not. It's black tea. It says on the package. <laughs> so it changes color because why can it do that? Purple, it kind of is changing purple. Yep, it's kind of changing purple. Um, Why do you think it can do that? Um, Because the leaves like um, dissolve flavor. Mm -hmm. And the leaves have a certain color that um, can change the color of the water. Mm -hmm. So if I put these tea bags in the water, they'll do the same thing? Right? Just like these. In the bag. Do you think these tea bags are going to change the color of the water? Why not? They're in a bag. There's no way for the tea to get into the water. The tea leaves aren't going to be able to make tea. So Jesus is walking through this crowd, and because his love for the world is so great, somebody can be healed just by touching him. The love between Jesus and the world is open. He has an open exchange for the whole world coming out of him. He's not closed off. You know, like the bag, his love can get out wherever it needs to go. Does that make sense? Are there things in our world that, so sometimes we're really good at loving people, right? Who's, who's really good at loving people sometimes? <laughs> sometimes we're pretty good at loving people. And we let our, and, we, and, and it changes the world, kind of like the, the color of the water is changing, right? But sometimes we close ourselves off to the world. Does that make sense? Yeah, sometimes we close ourselves off to the world, and that's, that, that can be hard, right? 
But with Jesus, we are able to open ourselves up so that we can be T. <laughs> so that we can be T. That's right. So that we can change the world, so that we can show God's love for other people too. Our love can flow into the world and, and be what it needs for people that need it, wherever they are. That make sense? Yeah. Let's pray. Holy God, Holy God. Thank, you thank you for your love, for your love. That, finds its way that finds its way wherever it needs to be, no matter what. Thank you for your love. Help us, Help us. show it, show it. To, the to the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. I invite you to stand as you are able to greet the gospel. Gospel according to St. Mark, the fifth chapter. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Well, then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus, 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 came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him, and a loud crowd gathered around him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years, and she had endured much under many physicians and spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, her hemorrhages stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately, aware that power had gone out of him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see, the crowd is pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And when they came to the house, of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead but sleeping. But they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother, those who were with him, and went in where the child was. And he took her by the hand and said to her, Talithikum, which means, Little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. And he strictly ordered them that no one should know about this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace, peace, and mercy are yours from the triune God. Amen. This Thursday was my fourth year ordination anniversary. <laughs> the only reason I know that is because that morning it popped up on my Facebook feed as a memory. 
So naturally, I have been thinking about these last four years, my journey to ordained leadership in the church and the church's place in the world today. What a strange journey. What a, an unusual vocation. What an odd thing to be the church. A community of sinners trying to figure out what grace and hope means in a world that begs us to hate and reject everything and everyone in the midst of all we have gone through in the world these last four years. Though Christianity has certainly seen its day in the sun and still has a huge amount of political privilege and power in the world, the way of Jesus rooted in love, dignity, and mercy filled justice still remains an outlier when people consider what it means to be a Christian and part of the church. And here, on the week of my anniversary of ordination, still at the beginning of what I hope to be a long and meaningful time in ordained ministry, I don't see that position changing. That kind of Christianity, that kind of belief, that kind of following Jesus will remain edgy while the ways of the world proving ourselves right and never wrong, chasing unattainable standards of beauty, rampant greed and success at all costs continues to be the norm of the world and unfortunately what people understand when they hear the word Christian. This way of the world it sucks us in even despite our best intentions and all the mindfulness podcasts we can possibly consume the way of the world rules supreme in our jobs in our political lives our neighborhoods our families and in so many christian churches and denominations it is the water that we swim in it is the middle the norm the average experience of humanity Despite all of that, here we are, who don't always get it right, but when we are at our honest and very best, are just a crew of people struggling to find a different, decentered, more on the edge answer to all that Jesus, to all with a Jesus that finds himself on the margins and not in the center of this way of the world over and over again. Despite the way of the world, its loud voice in our heads and in our hearts, we cling to the hope that one day Jesus will drag the margins, those on the outside, to the center, where they themselves, as well as the rest of the world, will know their worth. And this week's gospel text is all about that edge of hope. Jesus gets off a boat and is immediately greeted by this powerful man in the synagogue who begs Jesus to come and heal his daughter who is on the verge of death. Of course, Jesus says, yup, let's go. We are not going to talk much about her. But Jesus heals her. So keep that in mind. But on the way, Jesus is walking through a crowd and he is touched by a woman who has been bleeding for 12 years. Or rather, she touches the hem of his robe, the fringe of his prayer shawl. And the text says, he felt power go out of him. Jesus stops and he says, who touched my clothes? other but this was different but the disciples urge him to keep going the man whose daughter is about to die i imagine was a bit impatient but jesus stops and asks the question who was that what's going on there that felt different than it should have My Jesus. <laughs> I love that. 
He looked around to see who had done it, but the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth, the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Now, what is the A status that maybe should have lasted a week, still not a great thing, it lasted 12 years. The whole truth was that she had been pushed to the edge of society. The whole truth was that she had spent all of her money. And it doesn't say this in the text, but I wonder how many people in her family had stopped calling her to check in. How many of her friends had been asked for money too many times? and didn't answer the door anymore, pick up their phones. How many times did they say to themselves, should we invite her to the function? She's going to be weird for everybody. The whole truth was that her life was a mess, and she felt like she had no one and no place to go, and had been taken advantage of by a system that promised her hope, healing, and answers, a good life, but she had been left off worse. That is the whole truth. If you ever hear someone say these stories are irrelevant in today's culture, remember this story, friends. Who doesn't know medical debt? <laughs> it sounds like it could happen last week. This human being, this child of God, this daughter of Abraham had been forgotten. But our Jesus stops. <laughs> People trying to hurry him around. Our Jesus stops. Jesus gives his time. Despite the hurry and all the important things that people are asking him to do, despite his name being able to travel far and wide with the help of this man's daughter, he was a powerful man with a large social net. Jesus stops to help somebody that the world has forgotten even in a crowd, even with people clamoring for his attention in the center of his power, Jesus finds the margins. The people on the edge and gives healing, power, love, and time. And this woman on the edge finds healing, even on the edge of his robe, she finds life where the edges of herself, her hands, and the edges of Jesus, his clothes, meet. And isn't that just the way it has always been? <laughs> again, these stories are not irrelevant. They are happening yesterday, and they will happen again today, and they will happen again tomorrow. Friends, the life of Jesus is found on the edge it always has been. The way of God, it is found in those liminal spaces where we are not so sure where one thing starts and another begins. It is found in the places that the world doesn't think is worth its time, its power, its effort, its money. The face of God will be found in those faces and spaces where we just don't know, in the people we have been avoiding where we are not sure what is happening. This has always been the way. Always. And here we are, the church, in that space still. And so many of us in the church, we are concerned that the, about the position that we are in. We are worried that where we are is a bad thing. We're concerned that our numbers are down all over churches like ours, and we don't have the prestige of the leader in the story or his daughter. We don't have the people in our chairs and pews like we used to have. We do not know where we should go. We have lots of questions and wonders on how to fix it, and no answers, and it seems like we have tried everything and we keep trying to claw our way out of this weird position we're in. Yeah. 
There's another way. Like Jesus, we can stop. We can pay attention. We can listen and fight for those the world has forgotten and drag their stories to the center. Like this woman on the edge, we can be thankful because in this liminal space where we don't know which way to go and we are full of uncertainty and fear, by faith, we can know that Jesus is there with us. We as a congregation, we as a church with a capital C, we find ourselves in a world with fast, certain answers, avoidant conflict, and fear-fueled panic. Just like we always have. It's always been that way. We find ourselves with all the same outward pressures, pressures not to. We still find ourselves called to stop, to listen to stories of people forgotten, and to live into the hope with Jesus and our siblings on the edge and in between liminal spaces, despite its difficulty, uncertainty, and discomfort. And we give thanks because we find ourselves in a long tradition of being where Jesus has always been and where the gospel of love is the loudest. So let the rest of them have their power. Let them have their certainty and their hate. Let them have their fear. Let them have their siloed and small worlds because that is the way of world and culture and it has always been that way, but it is not for us. It is not for us. Give thanks. We are on the hem of Jesus' robe with the desperate woman. We are stopping and giving what we have. We are choosing relationships and community over pride like so many rejected people in the church before us. And we are finding freedom from what has always been to create something new and beautiful. This has always been the way of Jesus. It is the hope of the gospel and it is where true life must be found. Amen.
Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. God of abundance, you fill your church with a multitude of gifts. Sustain those among us who feel they are not valued. Open our hearts to the wondrous breath of all who call upon your name. God of grace, God of creation, your goodness abounds. Multiply the fruits of earth and rescue it from our wastefulness. God of grace, God of justice, you reign in steadfast love. Bring peace between nations ravaged by war or strife, especially in Gaza. Illumine paths of justice and freedom for those who lead them. God of grace, God of compassion, your touch brings healing to, and your word revives us for life. Here are prayers for Patty, Clara, crew, all who are in need and doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers who provide care. Turn wailing into dancing and weeping into joy. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of community, you gather us at your table of plenty. Where there is hunger among us, open our hands where we are indifferent to the needs of others, open our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. We also pray for healing and comfort for Clara after her surgery, for Amara Williams as she is experiencing an empty house after the death of James. We hope that she feels God's presence and comfort. We pray for the Heinz family as they celebrate Heather's life in the mountains. Yeah, okay, that was the only one. Um, <laughs> God of ages, your great, great is your faithfulness. We remember in thanksgiving our beloved dead, James and Heather, who with all the saints sing without ceasing in your realm of glo glory. <laughs> God of grace, your prayer. Prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. 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 Among us making peace right here, right now. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please share a sign of peace with your neighbors.
At this time, Raymond and Tom are going to be going around with an offering basket. Your gifts, your treasures help make the ministries of All of Hope happen um, to proclaim the gospel in our community as a gift itself. Um, so uh, thank you for contributing to what we're doing here. Um. <laughs> Join me in the offertory prayer. Holy Creator, you have given generously to us out of your abundant love. You created the earth in all its wild beauty, showed us a community where all is shared, and we now live into that new and abundant way with you and with each other. We give our gifts back, our time, skills, and money to your use so that the whole world can know your goodness. Bless these gifts and let them travel far. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of wind and flame, we praise your wild beauty flying free in the shining air. Your spirit nurtured life in outrageous diversity. She raised up judges to protect the weak, made kings dance with shameless joy, and prophets burn with holy anger. Through, through the spirit, the word became flesh, and the world was called to hear his voice. When he left his followers, the spirit was poured out on all flesh and crossed the line between male and female, slave and free, the sure and the searching. She is with us here right now and is bringing Christ near and filling us with the hope we need. On the night that he was betrayed, he gathered with his faltering friends for a meal that tasted like freedom. Calling them to his table, he took bread, gave thanks, and he broke it, saying, This is my body, which is broken in love for you. Do this, he asked, in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and he poured it out for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, he asked, in remembrance of me. Therefore, with all of God's creation, all who have tasted the spirit of life with the thirsty and the cold and all who long to dream again, we worship your glory as heaven touches earth. Thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the story today, after Jesus heals the first woman, she heals a little girl. Goes into where everybody thinks she's dead, heals her. She gets up, and the first thing she says, he says is, give her something to eat. <laughs> give her something to eat. Here we are. Something to eat. Something to sustain us, to fuel us for our life forward, to remind us that we are gods, that we are full of life, that we have Jesus with us to provide healing and are sent out to give healing to others. A reminder that this meal is for all people, no matter what. We celebrate an open table. The most important thing I can stress, our most holy sacraments are laid open for everybody, because everybody deserves God's love. We have gluten-free wafers if you should need it. We have what? grape juice Dude. if you would prefer grape juice than wine. Um, we don't have ushers, so We'll do this side first, and then we'll do this side. So whenever you feel like it's a line you want to stand in, you come up and jump in the line. Um, if you are at home, know that this is the body of Christ broken alone for you, and this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Hear the invitation. These are holy things for holy people. The gifts of God are free.
And now may the spirit of life now may the spirit of life fall upon us through the gifts of Christ that we would know God's love. Amen. Let us pray. May we who have fed at wisdom's table take her welcome out to where tables are reserved and doors are closed. May the spirit drive us to break our bread on the altar of the world. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's the benediction time. Please stand as you are able for the benediction in the sending song. You, all of you, you are children of God, gifted with dreams and visions. Upon you rests the grace of God like flames of fire. May the deep peace of Christ be with you. The strong arms of God sustain you, and the Holy Spirit strengthen you in every way. Amen. Serve the risen one. Love God, serve God. Love all, serve all. that is committed to being a light of hope, inclusion, and celebration to Castle Rock and beyond. We hope you will join us for worship Sundays at 9.30 at New Hope Presbyterian Church.